Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be giving an item in my home a facelift because it needs it and I wanted something a little different and I'm trying to do it on a budget. So yeah, let's talk about it. So in this space, I would really like to have a coffee table and Ian prefers the functionality of an ottoman over coffee table, which I can appreciate. We definitely in this space is more of a loungy type situation. And um, so I get it, I get it. But I find that when we have friends over, no one has a place to put their, put their cup and their drink, unless you're sitting on the ends of the couches. And so it's been kind of like a struggle for us to come up with a potential solution that appeases both of us. Now, that being said, we have an ottoman and it is from an old furniture set that did not match this couch. This is a love sack. We could get a new ottoman that does match it and it would cost us about a thousand dollars because when you buy it on sale and all the pieces, you know, love sack does like the more you buy, the more you save situation. So to actually like buy a one off piece gets to be a little bit expensive. I'm not really looking to spend a thousand dollars for something that when I already have a piece of furniture that fits. Now, it's a different, it's faux leather. Um, it's a different darker color. And you know, the functionality of it is still quite good. Like it, it does its job. It holds up your feet, it's comfortable. It's big enough that Delilah can lay on it and snuggle. And so the reality of it is like, I didn't want to just get rid of that ottoman and invest a lot of money into something else. So like any good DIYer, I took to Pinterest to see what my options could be. Like, can I reupholster this and make it more intentional? Because the mismatched leather just came, kind of seems like disjointed and just like, oh, you're using it because you have it, which is the case. But you know, we want our spaces to look pretty. We want them to be functional and we want them to like kind of go together. That's the whole point of designing a space. So I found this really expensive, like high-end option and it is kind of like an ottoman with a little like wood overlay tray and i loved how this was more clean and modern because the furniture in here is a little bit more like clean lined and simplistic whereas my ottoman is very very traditional um so this was like the perfect solution right i'm like oh well that's an ottoman and a coffee table that solves ian and i's problem but the problem was it was $1,200. And I'm like, no, I cannot spend $1,200 on an ottoman slash coffee table. So anyway, then I started looking for dupes online to see if I had some, like could find something else. And Target has one very similar for like 300 bucks, I think it is. Um, I'll link it below in case you wanna in invest in it. But I really wanted to do something that I could revamp my ottoman that I have that is perfectly good and use things that I have. So I thought to myself, I can DIY this for even cheaper, way cheaper than the luxury high-end one, but even cheaper than the Target option. So after deciding that I could DIY this and dupe it, I set out to make a plan and we started off by going to the fabric store. So I definitely want something textural and kind of neutral. Kind of nice, but it's got a green tinge to it. The prices are really affordable. <laughs> kind of looking for a creamy linen, although that's nice. A slimy linen would be nice. A nice look. I like something like this, but in a cream color. And I don't mind that dark color. It does have a little bit of a green undertone though. That's a contender.
I ended up finding a slub linen fabric at $6 a yard that actually matches perfectly to the other colors in this room. Once home, I laid the fabric out to start measuring my pieces. I knew I would need the top, two long sides, and two short sides. To get these measurements, I measured the size of the ottoman and added an additional half inch for seam allowance to each of the pieces. Once my pieces were cut, I took them to the ironing board to iron out any wrinkles that were in the material. Then I folded down the edge of each side so that I could get a nice crisp line when sewing. It's important to sew the raw edges of your material to make sure that you don't have fraying on your final product. I used a simple straight stitch and this helped to make sure that things would stay in place. Up next was to connect the pieces together to make the actual slip cover. This was intimidating because I wanted to make sure that it fit really, really well. So I took my time and made sure all the sides aligned. All right, here we are trying on the slip cover, holding my breath and hoping that it fits. Luckily, I measured right and got my seams perfect because it could not have fit any better. With the slip cover complete, we set off to Home Depot to get supplies for the wooden table topper. Off to Home Depot. Our home away from home, right? I knew on my list was to make sure I got stain and plywood and edge banding. So typically you would use a oak or a pine, but I opted for a birch to get a really nice smooth finish. Here we go. And I want walnut, dark walnut. This is what I need right here. So we've got our piece of ply here. We are going to make the top that's 27.5 inches that is 12 inches wide and then two side pieces that are 16 and a half long by 12 inches wide and in theory i should have just enough wood i wanted to make sure that i would sanded all of the rough edges off of my cuts this meant going around each edge and giving the top and bottom of each piece a slight sanding. One thing to note is when sanding plywood, you wanna make sure to use a very low grit and not over sand. It is using a thin veneer to cover the plywood, so it's very easy to go through that veneer if you over sand. To connect the pieces, we'll be using a Craig jig, which I've never used before. So we've tested it out off camera, and we figured out how to make it work. Um, so we're basically going to be doing this, and then I'll put edge banding on the edges to make it look all nice and neat, and then we'll go from there. The hardest part about using this tool was figuring out where to put the pocket holes. The instructions were very clear, and very easy to follow once I wrapped around how to combine my two pieces. We're gonna do a little bit extra than necessary just to make sure that we have enough. But, um, so you put this up against, you know, there's instructions on this. I'm not gonna tell y'all how to do it because it's the first time I'm doing it. Um, but these are the basics that we've learned. So you put that there in the center and then you Clamp it down in place, make sure it's all flush, and then you just drill in the 
your drill in, there's a stop here. So we have got six holes. You probably don't need this many. However, I would rather have more than not enough. So, and it's gonna be hidden on the underside. So then we're gonna do the exact same thing on this one. This is the bad side since it's splintered there. We got a prettier side here. It's not the greatest because we've got a splinter on it, but it'll be towards the bottom and it's better, better than this. So. We'll just repeat steps one through three. Okay, we're gonna wood glue and then we are gonna use the screws because actually wood glue is the strongest glue in the world. Using our 45 degree clamps. You wanna line it up? Yeah. Oh, something just. Okay, this has been sitting for about 30 minutes with the wood glue, so we're gonna undo our clamps and get on to the next step. Okay, as you can see, we've got our piece here. So, um, we, this, I remeasured everything and it looks like everything will still do well and fit. So the next thing that we're gonna do is use edge banding to hide these ply, plywood edges. Like this just makes it look kind of like a DIY. So I, so I bought this stuff from my local hardware store and we're going to be applying it to these front edges. And it's quite simple. You literally just use an iron. There's some adhesive on the back and you use an iron to heat set it and it helps to hide all of this. Now this I did get in birch um, to match the plywood. So we're gonna start with that. So I'm using my iron on the lowest, or the highest setting of heat and the lowest setting of steam. And literally all you do is take this, whoops, and hope to not unravel the whole thing. I'm gonna ask Ian to hold that for me. Make sure you get it flush. And you want a little bit to hang over for this. And you literally just take your iron and press it down. And it'll start to adhere. What? And you can actually take your iron on the 45, kind of run it along the edge at a 45 to help it adhere nicely to the edges on both sides. Now that all of the edge banding has been applied to the piece, I'm taking my sander with a 220 grit and just sanding all of the edges down and to make sure that all of the rough edges have been removed. Okay, we've now got our wood cleaned off and we are ready to pre-stain. Now birch is notorious for not staining well, so I'm gonna stain this, or I'm gonna treat this with a pre-stain to start, and then we will go from there. I'm gonna start off using this Minwax pre-stain, 
and we're gonna give this a good one-two coat on all over with this. Okay, this has dried for an hour. It is not the color I thought it was going to be. So I actually went into my stash and have this old stain that I've not used in a very long time, as you can tell from the rusted top. But I think I wanted to match the wood that's already in that room and I need it to be darker and more red. So I'm actually gonna do a coat of this red mahogany over top of this dark walnut and I'm hoping that that gives me the color that I'm looking for. Oh yeah, this is the color I was looking for. Okay, now that we've got our ottoman here. We are ready to try on the slip cover. So you saw me put it like making this the other night and um, I'm just gonna slip it on. Got a little wrinkled so I might have to steam it. But y'all it's a pretty good fit. I'm pretty happy with that. Got my corners. Okay, ta-da, and now for the moment of truth. Let's see how this looks. Y'all, it fits. I'm so happy it fits. Y'all, it fits. I am so excited it fits, and I think it looks so Good. You can still use it as an ottoman. If you have a glass, you can put it here. It matches pretty closely with our cup holders on the ends. Like, I'm super thrilled about this. Okay, let's style this. All right guys, what do you think? I personally think it turned out really, really lovely. I love the fact that it now coordinates or is purposely different than our couch. I love that we were able to upcycle something that like honestly just, I didn't really love, like my style kind of had changed. And I also love that I have functionality of not only an ottoman, but also a coffee table. So I think this is gonna be really great. I think we did a good job with the stain and matching everything and just this little bit of hard space to be able to sit down a cocktail or, you know, the remote so we can actually find it is lovely. What item in your space would you love to give a facelift to? You know, I was searching high and low and found that high end option and thought I could make that for a lot less than $1,200. And you know, like some people don't feel like they have the skill set to be able to do that, and that's totally fine. But I knew that I could, and I knew that I could save myself quite a bit of money. Okay, so the fabric was $25. I don't know if I really count all of that because I have enough fabric to do this once over. So I'm gonna actually say that I spent $15 on the fabric. We spent $50 on the Craig jig and the clamp. Um, 
And then I spent 40 on the wood. And then I also spent about 25 on the stain and poly. So this project came out to be at $130 roughly. I was able to dupe something that I really liked and I also was able to find a solution that gave Ian the ottoman of his dreams and gave me the table space that I wanted. So let me know what you think about this dupe and this facelift of an item. If you liked today's video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, come back every Saturday for a new video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.